Hi everybody. Now according to Wikipedia, air conditioning is the process of removing heat from an interior space to create a more comfortable living environment and it sometimes includes uh, removal of moisture, reduction of humidity and it's often referred to as comfort cooling. Now air conditioning can be achieved using a whole range of methods including the infamous mechanical air conditioning that we're all used to which is an active system or we can be looking at passive systems of air conditioning including things like passive cooling, evaporative cooling or ventilative cooling. Passive cooling is really a, a design philosophy for buildings that concentrates on the removal of heat using a building design and no energy to it at all. Now the method really involves the prevention of moving heat into a building or removing heat from the building using natural control. Now good examples of this would be the Iranian heat tower or even the Earthship. Ventilative cooling is the one that we've already looked at. It's by using some mechanical means to move the air around to cool the indoor space. And a sash window is a good example of this, as is a punker, as is an ordinary fan. Now evaporative cooling is a, a different kind of animal actually. It's often called a swamp cooler, desert cooler, swamp box, evaporative cooler. And they work on the principle of the latent heat of evaporation of water. It takes energy for water to evaporate and that energy is drawn from the environment cooling the air. It can actually be more efficient than refrigeration but it's only really suitable for dry climates. In humid climates people often complain about them not working and that's because the water can't evaporate and therefore cool. So you see them a lot in dry desert climates and a great example of this is the Egyptian quilla. Now essentially with the exception of evaporative cooling all air conditioning works the same way. It basically blows hot air over a cold surface to cool it and then moves that cool air into a building to keep you cool. During video 1953 we made this thing. In this thing we just put a lot of ice in there, blew the air in through and over the ice and then out to cool you and the room that you were in. And people were saying this is a swamp cooler. Well it's, it's not. What happens with humid air is the humid air is drawn in. Of course the water in the air contacts the ice and cools. Because it cools it condenses and you would actually get more water out of this than you put in because you're condensing the air in the humid environment and then that cool air is blown out. Now that's how that works to a point because after a certain point if you're running this for a long time you basically have a bag full of water you're then picking up the water and it becomes an evaporative cooler but initially when certainly when it's full of ice it in fact is just like a normal air conditioner. It's blowing air over a cold surface to cool that air. In this case, it would actually dehumidify a degree as well. Then I came across these things. These things are cool blocks. Eh? This one was 50 pence. I was in my local store when I spotted it. And of course, things like this, they have their pros and their cons. And I was thinking about a way of improving it. And if we make something using this, then we've in fact created a hybrid device. We're using the essential cooling of the refrigerator to create these. We pop them in a device and then use air blown over it then that air will get cold because of this and then that cold air will then be blown out and of course this is retaining everything in this handy neat little package so it's not going to drip anywhere and because we've made it hybrid of course we could make this portable still and we could solar power it because we're running our fan from a 5 volt USB so win 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 hey eh? we've got a cooling device that would be pretty awesome I think so next thing I did was turn to Tinkercad to create a cartridge to hold these. I have of course made these files available, they're in Tinkercad and you can just download them, the link is in the description below. If we create a superstructure around that and print the whole thing out, what we're going to get is a collection of parts. When you finish your 3D printing, it really is just a kit of parts. Hey, now you can make this by hand because all we're really doing is arranging a rack of ice blocks and then a fan behind that rack to blow air over the ice blocks. That's the 
kernel of what it is that we're doing. Of course, we've done it in 3D printing because we have 3D printing, but you could, without a doubt, reproduce this without 3D printing. Anyway, there's the cartridge where the ice blocks go in, and they've got a couple of projections there. That just needs feet on it. Two feet, one there and there. And I've chosen these feet from Tinkercad, and there's a link in the description. And then just glue on like that. This section is the section where we're going to put the fan. Now, I did it in two parts so that it could be printed on a standard size printer. So that bit glues on there like that. And then this section glues on or bolts on there like that to make the blower section. This just fits inside there. And there's a couple of indents to take those projections to clip it on the inside. That's all there is to it. And all we have to do is glue the bits together. Okay, that's it put together. I personally think it looks awesome. A bit like one of those Chinese dogs that's meant to protect you. Now the white bit, that bit there is the cartridge and that's not fixed in. Hey, This section, of course, I've used a toroidal fan because it's really unbelievably quiet eh? and it is supposed to be more energy efficient. And of course, we're able to plug it into a USB port so we could run that from a rechargeable battery or maybe a solar panel or something like that. But it's very portable. This section clearly is the section that carries the cold because what we've created is a hybrid device. It works just the same way as any other air conditioner. We're using power to blow the air, but we have pre-chilled our surface by using the refrigerator, so we've created a hybrid device. When we plug that in, it'll blow the warm air over there. That will cool the air, and the cool air will come out here. Now, the limitation on it is to do with surface area. Of course, we're using freezer blocks, and so in relation to a heat exchanger, it's not a great surface area, but if we put more surface area and we'd get a better result without a doubt. Even so, we have created ourselves a hybrid rechargeable device because once those blue blocks are exhausted, that is they've melted, stick them back in the refrigerator, refreeze them, slot them in there and your AC is ready to run again. So we got a rechargeable hybrid air conditioner device, uh, device that can be run from the USB solar or backup battery. <laughs> I think it's a huge win because those blue blocks, they don't drip once they're exhausted then you just reuse them uh, and you reuse them for infinity i mean I, i've had those freezer blocks or freezer blocks of that type for a good 20 years or so this is something that just doesn't wear out which is particularly cool equally with the design this is just design choices i've made because i like the look of this particular thing i mean that big fan on the back if you can't make a toroidal propeller, you might want to consider two PC fans. There are ultra quiet versions, and you could put those on to achieve exactly the same thing. So there's a degree of adaptability um, to it that you can take and, and run with if you feel like it. But the essential concept is this idea of pre-charging the cold surface and then using low power to drive air over that so we get cool air out of here. And of course, there is no humidity here either because we've contained everything within that plastic wrap of the cool block. So I'm pretty pleased with that. The only thing that remains, obviously, is to put some in here and plug it in and see what happens. So I've pre-frozen them. They incidentally are um, 110 by 165 by 18 and I think they're pretty much a standard actually but I just got them from my local store and of course they slot in there like that. We put six of them in there then we put that together like that. Moment of truth. Let's find, there it is. <laughs> I can't 
telling you how lovely that is. I mean, it's really, that's really cool dry air that's being um, pulled out there. And of course, one of the amazing things is how quiet that is. Now then, if you uh, want to know how to do the conversion of a PC fan to this toroidal fan, then there's a link at the end of this video where I did the first one in, that's actually really cool, where I did the first one in this series. Just follow that link and it'll describe all that about uh, the fan for you. That's what I'm looking for. It's 10 degrees already. If I point that at me, then it's bathing me with beautiful cool air. Okay, this is a, a tiny device, eh? so you know, you're not going to do the Buckingham Palace with this. But it's pretty much the same as a fan heater, only it's a fan cooler, and obviously it's a hybrid device. And because I'm pointing at me, I'm getting the benefit of that coolness. That is actually, Truly awesome. Guys, you, you've got to make one of these and give it a go because it's going to knock your socks off. How beautiful that is, particularly on a warm day. And of course, we don't have the uh, problems of humidity with this. So suitable for small spaces, suitable for spaces with damp, damp problems, caravans, that sort of thing. I love the look of it. I'm going to redesign it a little bit, I think, so extend this to here so that this rests under. Anyway, a little bit of redesign to go on there, but I think that is a thing of beauty. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it inspires you. Thank you very much for watching, and please do remember to like and subscribe.